This event focuses on abortion stigma and its linkages with criminalization and restrictive laws and policies, as well as the impact on the rights of women, particularly adolescent girls. Each year, 47,000 women and adolescent girls die from unsafe abortions. Now that's one every 11 minutes. The systematic and substantial pattern of denials and violations of the rights of women and girls requires condemnation and urgent action. We know from mounting evidence that restrictive abortion laws are a major predictor of unsafe abortion. These laws not only result in these deaths, but also a staggering number of injuries and disabilities to men and women and girls, counting in millions annually. Nearly 40% of the world's population lives in countries with highly restrictive abortion laws. At best, abortion stigma fuels inaction to address restrictive laws and policies which call out to be challenged. These restrictive laws and policies continue to fuel the stigma. So it's a vicious cycle. Abortion stigma has countless other consequences which this panel will explore. In April of this year, a group of leaders in the area of abortion rights decided to say, enough of this inaction, enough with ignoring these pervasive patterns of violation of the rights of women girls. The early declaration on safe and legal abortion, which are five dollars of the side, was the result of that meeting. All of this is to say that we expect more states, we expect more of the UN and of the Human Rights Council. In this context, we're pleased to present an examination of this issue and the role of the international community from a variety of perspectives. And I'm pleased to be joined by an esteemed group of, of colleagues on this panel. Uh, first, to my right, we have Rebecca Brown, who is a human rights lawyer and the director of global advocacy with the Center for Reproductive Rights, a global human rights organization with offices in New York, Nepal, Kenya, Colombia, and Geneva. She leads the center's advocacy team in building human rights standards and seeking increased recognition, recognition and implementation of reproductive rights in the United Nations and in other intergovernmental processes. Rebecca serves on the board of Judgment Watch and has published articles related to equality, reproductive rights, economic and social rights, and disability. Rebecca will be speaking about the impact on adolescent girls on abortion and restrictive abortion laws in the United States. To my right, um, we have Chantal Umohoza, who's a long-time consultant for IPAS, who recently coordinated research on the criminalization of abortion in Rwanda. She's a Rwandan human rights activist currently living and studying in the Netherlands. Chantal has more than nine years of experience working on sexual reproductive health and rights programs, policies, and advocacy in Rwanda at the international level. Chantal will speak about the causes and consequences of abortion stigma, looking particularly at the research she's done in Rwanda. On the far end of the podium, we have Valentina Mojeno, who is the coordinator of institutional development at the Instituto de Liberdad School, Simon de Beauvoir, a Mexican nonprofit, non governmental feminist organization. She holds a master's degree in Latin American and Caribbean studies, a bachelor's degree in international relations, and diplomas on feminist empowerment for social action and public policy with a gender and human rights perspective. Valentina will speak about the impact of restrictive laws and policies on maternal mortality in Mexico. And to my immediate left, we have Jan Woolman, who is a feminist activist working on the intersections of women's rights, sexual rights, and the internet. She has extended extensive experience in women's rights, media, and ICTs in South and Southern Africa. Jen currently coordinates a project on violence against women and technology in seven countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America as part of her work at the ABC Women's Rights Program. Jen will address three topics, um, censorship of abortion-related information on the internet, uh, issues of privacy, and uh, the targeting of abortion rights defenders on the internet. So without further ado, I will turn it over to the esteemed panel. 